All right, best of the year par meters. Uh, some of these are definitely better than others, but best as voted by you guys and what you're picking up as the most popular option out there. What is it? Surprisingly, it's also like the most expensive option and it's the MQ510. It is not often that the most expensive option uh, is uh, the most popular option. And it's usually when the community together has all decided for sure this is the one we should be using. Uh, I will say that I think some of you could be using a different one. And then by some of you, I mean most of you and you could save a bunch of money. But uh, we'll get into that today and best of par meters this year. Okay, so this is why it's number one, uh, as by you guys, but best in terms of both accuracy and convenience is what? It's the MQ510. Uh, you know, one of the other team members here said it wisely for me many years ago. Some things, man, are just better with a standalone meter. And this is it. Yep. Uh, this is why. It's because I can look at it and I can move the meter around and I can see where everything is. And I can see it in real time. Some things are just better this way. This little blue sensor here, universally adopted by the reefing community as better than almost all the other available options. Certainly, you know, anything cheaper than this isn't better. And not many people are gonna wanna go more expensive than not that. exactly. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, all about accuracy and convenience and why you guys are picking it as number one. All right, the flip side of that is, what's best for those that want convenience but don't really care all that much about perfect accuracy. And as if you were in within 10% or so, it'd be just fine. Yeah, and that's the thing. Being within 10%, you're not gonna make or break anything. That's gonna get you where you need to be. And that's where the uh, MQ210X comes in. Yes, this guy right here. Uh, you'll notice the sensor looks a little bit different and it uh, frankly isn't as good. Uh, uh, and the, specifically, it doesn't read the blue range as good. And so that's what reefers really chime in on is like uh, the blue range is where it really counts and we're not reading the edge of that perfectly. Uh, and so this isn't an accurate tool. Okay, well, I understand well that might be true. Uh, we've tested it and it is true. Uh, one of the things though that you don't notice when you look at one of these charts is, well, this thing is a fairly square grid and it reads most of the area perfectly. This one actually overreads most of the white and underreads, or I should say the other colors that make up white, and underreads the far end like violet range. But since our tanks have all of that, just kind of washes out to some degree. And all the tests that we've done here, this thing is within like, you know, 10-ish percent uh, of that one. And, you know, I don't know, for most people that's good. Like, do you think your tank really cares whether or not it's 270 par or 300 par? Because I've never met, if, if, if that was, if we had to be that close, this hobby wouldn't exist. No, we'd be coming calls uh, off right Yeah, it wouldn't exist. So, uh, and I certainly don't think there's a bit of a difference between 55 par and 50 par. No. So uh, you can save like 150 bucks uh, on this one. And I, this goes against everything in reefing because we're all like really kind of uh, real particular about how we measure stuff. But sometimes close is good enough and par is probably one of them. All right, so best on a budget. This is a funny one because sometimes you can have the best available thing for the lowest available cost. And this is one of them. Yeah, that's going to be the uh, MQ510, but you might not realize you have a 60-day return window with a, what is it, 10% restocking fee? Something like, in the neighborhood, yep. A low restock. You can get this thing, use it for two months, get all your friends in on it. They can use it while you've got it. And then when you're done with it, you can send it back because I, I don't know about you, but I'm not fussing with my lights all that much. Once I set them, you're pretty much solid, and then you can just get your money back. Yeah, I got news for you. This isn't like a profit center. This is just a service, man. <laughs> like we want you to have this thing because if you buy lights and set them up and you set them up properly, like you're going to go out there and spend a thousand dollars on your lights and then you're just going to wing it. Yeah. Uh, no, we want you to have this thing because we want you to be successful. Uh, it's good for everybody, man, if you're successful. And so use this thing, use it for two months, tweak your lights, get it to just where you want it. And you actually don't even really need it for two months. You can probably do it in a single afternoon yeah. over the course of about 30 minutes. Uh, tune it to exactly where you know there's really like, like pockets like 200 to 350, which are for SPS. And then like much lower than that, like 50 to 100 ish uh, for LPS is super easy, man, tune it. And then if you really want to be generous, you know, loan it to your club, man, for a few weeks, uh, have as many people as possible use the damn thing. Uh, but for 
like, let me put it this way. You could buy a $900 light, right? Uh, and a $100 uh, par meter, and you'd have way more success than if you bought a $1,500 light. Right? Yes. Z setting up the right tool and using it the right way will produce way better results than the perfect tool. So sometimes the cheapest available option, which is use it and then just return it for a stocking fee, is also the best available option. Right, but what about best if I'm on a budget, but I want to keep it for the future? In that case, you'd be looking at the MQ410, and that's basically the 210X sensor, but it's a USB model, so you're not paying for the uh, controller to go with it. You're gonna be plugging it into a Mac or PC laptop or a computer, like even a, a whole station if it's close by the tank, and just using the program within your computer to do all your measuring. So that means you're gonna like bring your laptop or whatever to the tank, you'll plug it in, you'll put it on the end of your wand and you'll go, you know, looking for par. And instead of showing up on the meter, it'll show up on your screen. And this is a lot, lot cheaper. And you can see that it has the like cheaper uh, head on it, but let's just be frank. The reason we're going with is to be cheap. Uh, so close is probably good enough in this case. And this is probably the best answer for a lot of people. All right, this is a bit of an oddball one but best if you want to continually monitor PAR. Do some other cool things like it. What is it? It's gonna be the Neptune Systems uh, PAR monitoring kit. Uh, that's the only sensor I've ever seen that you can hook up and run just full time and get that data documented for you. And this is a really niche thing. Not a lot of people are gonna to wanna to use this. It's some high level stuff, but there is a good use for it. It's called DLI because you're gonna shoot out like graphs now, right? You're gonna actually be able to track the PAR uh, throughout the day. And basically, to some degree, what we're doing is counting photons. So I'm gonna make up numbers here, but if I had one million photons hit it in an hour and I had it on for eight hours, it'd be eight million photons. It hit the corals and provided that energy. But what if I have it on weaker in the morning, right? And what if I want to extend the hours without you know, uh, hurting the biology? The common thought process here is, well, then I could probably put it on for 12 hours, but I'll slowly ramp it up. And now I can track the PAR with the PMK kit, uh, which is basically one of these in a little rock that you put down there. Uh, I can track the PAR and then like, you know, take notes on every hour where it is and then see if it still equals like the 8 million photons per se. Uh, this is a bit nerdy, but this is how, you know, we find the tools between you know, providing the right light uh, to the, uh, and the, providing the biology to the animal. And also it's in a home environment where I actually want to see it. The whole value of the thing is kind of enjoy it with my eyes. I want to enjoy it in the morning. I want to enjoy it in the evening. How do I spread that out a little bit, but still provide the same amount of po photons? That's the heart of the DLI conversation. Uh, and, you know, one of the ways to get the, like forward thinking on this and be the trailblazer is a PMK kit and monitoring it and shooting it out in graphs. All right, best item almost all of you should buy, but I bet you uh, like only a third do. Yeah, and that's the, the simplest thing ever. It's just the wand for these PAR sensors. Without this, using that PAR sensor is tougher. And I honestly, I would never want to DIY one after having one of these because they're just awesome. Uh, you got wet arm syndrome. Yeah, you know, like just constantly putting your arm in there, digging around all over the place, trying to read this thing. It's just a mess, man. Or uh, I can just do, 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 just like that. Uh, very, very, very easy. So uh, consider the wand. It makes it so, so much easier, especially if you're intending on keeping it. It's definitely worth it. All right. So all that said, Thomas, which one do you pick? I'm going to go uh, 210X and I'm, I'm going to keep it. It's a great PAR sensor. Having the actual uh, readout in your hand already and not having to hook it to a computer and open a program and deal with all that noise. Um, it's just the easiest way to do it. And honestly, that 10% discrepancy doesn't make a difference to me in the grand scheme of keeping my corals happy. I can hit the numbers I need to hit. The 10% is not going to change anything. And I like saving money in that instance. Yeah, spending something else. Yeah. Um, they could spend it on a steak dinner. They More spend coral. It on a, spend it on a, cor, uh, a wand. Exactly. Uh, uh, so for me, similar, but I'm going to actually say spend uh, uh, the best option that I pick for most people would be do the 510 and then uh, return it. Here is the reality of it. The best possible thing. I mean, the best possible thing you could do for the lighting on your tank is set it up to the best you possibly can in the beginning and leave it the hell alone. This thing actually entices you to mess with it. Uh, uh, all the little switches and apps entices you to screw up your tank. 
Just set it up the right way the first time and then leave it alone. And actually returning this thing after tweaking it for a couple of weeks or doing whatever I need to do is the right move. Not only does it remove that temptation, uh, but it ended up being the best and cheapest option simultaneously. All right, power meters, know the one. But do we know the right test kit? Do we know the right two part? Do we know the right salt mix? Do we know any of this stuff? Yes, we do. And it's all here in the best of the year playlist. Go check it out.